Hello, I'm Kyle with Confident Canines. How are you? Um, today in this video, we are going to talk about reasonable expectations and setting reasonable expectations. And this is a huge part of being a dog trainer is setting reasonable expectations for your clients. This kind of ties into a little bit what I talked about um, in a previous video, um, talking about the training ceiling. So it's kind of connected to that, but I thought it's it's different enough. I think it warrants its own video because this isn't just about the training ceiling. The training ceiling is a part of setting reasonable expectations, but it's not the sole factor in setting reasonable expectations. So let me stop beating around the bush and just tell you what I mean. I'm going to stop waving that pen around to wagging my pen at you. It makes me seem like I'm mad at you and I'm not. I'm here to inspire you and help you. Um, so setting reasonable expectations for yourself, uh, or for your clients, or for anyone that you're working with, or even if you're just training your own dog, having reasonable expectations will help you so much because it will keep you from feeling frustrated. It will keep you from wanting to move too quickly through a training program. Uh, and as such, it will help you get the best results in the most efficient way possible. So setting expectations is really going to come down to what are you dealing with? How long have you been dealing with it? What are you dealing with as a person? What kind of issues do you have that maybe are contributing to your you and your dog? What's your relationship like? What's your attitude like towards your dog? So you're a factor in setting reasonable expectations as well. And I'll talk a little bit about that. So as an example, if you have a dog who is six years old and you've had that dog six years, and as long as you can remember, which I have clients like this, that dog has been anxious. It has been reactive on the leash. It has been making noise in the crate, you know, whining. I mean, just anxiety. It's had separation anxiety and your dog is a hot little mess. And you've been dealing with it a long time and it's gotten worse over time. And you tried a whole bunch of stuff, but it hasn't helped. Um, and you are ready to address this and you find a great trainer, you found confident canines or an equally fabulous trainer in your area, and you're ready to really start making some headway. I mean, it's important to recognize this is, you know, if you have a dog who's six years old, who's been having like massive issues for a long time, is it going to turn around like overnight? No. Is it going to turn around in a week? No. Can you make progress in a week? Sure. Absolutely. You can. Um, but you know, this isn't, you're not going to fix this in a month even, you know, you can make massive amounts of headway in a month, but you're, it's a journey. It's going to be a journey. You're going to be working on this to one extent or another for a long time. And that's going to vary from dog to dog, uh, but it's also going to vary from owner to owner. So like I said, you're going to be a factor in this as well. You know, what are you, what, what's your attitude towards your dog? Are you leaning on your dog emotionally? Um, are you feeling bad about bringing high levels of structure to your dog? Are you going to feel bad about, um, correcting your dog for certain things? Um, you know, that's a factor too. If you have a lot of emotional involvement, I mean, we're all emotional about our dogs. We love our dogs, but you know, if you can't sort of bring a certain amount of neutrality to your training, or if you're struggling to bring a certain amount of neutrality to your training, cause you can do it, but for some people, it's going to be harder than others. If you're very used to leaning on your dog um, emotionally, um, you know, that's going to be a factor too, because you're going to have some stuff to work through as well. So um, it's important to realize that those types of things are going to contribute to how quickly things move along and how far you get and in what amount of time. You know, on the flip side, if you have a really well-bred dog with really awesome genetics and you start training at eight weeks old, you know, you're going to have a different set of expectations. Um, you know, again, for a couple of different reasons. Number one, you know, you know, you're starting with a dog with really great genetics. You're starting training at eight weeks. So, you know, or nine weeks, whenever you get the dog. So, you know, your dog isn't going to develop, you know, a, an anxious state of mind or a fearfulness or an aggression issue. You know, you're sidestepping all of that stuff that a lot of people end up dealing with down the road because you're starting training from day one. And I don't just mean like teaching your dog how to sit and shake hands for a treat. I mean, you're training your dog, you know, you're crate training your dog, you're, you're training your dog, you know, how to be, you're socializing your dog, you know, effectively, all that good stuff to contribute to a really awesome state of mind. You know, 
um, your expectations are going to be different. You're probably going to get somewhere a lot quicker. So you can have a really, really highly trained dog at like six months old, you know, um, and you still have to keep going with it. It's not going to last forever, but you'll have made tons of progress, you know, it, 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 you know, before that even, I mean, you know, four or five, six months old, um, you know, whereas, you know, someone's been dealing with something for many years and their dog has really intense issues, you know, they can make a ton of progress, you know, in four or five, six months, but are the two dogs going to be like exactly the same? Like, no, this dog is, you know, probably still going to be predisposed to you know, some anxiety. And this dog is going to have like no issues whatsoever, you know, because they're just in completely different situations. And so the expectations are different. Also, you know, if you're starting training at eight weeks old, you know, you're avoiding any negative kind of uh, associations within your relationship. Your dog sees you as a leader from day one. Your dog never sees you as a source of soft energy or anything like that. Your dog sees you as a source of structure and guidance and accountability from the very beginning. So you don't have to rebuild your relationship. Someone who's been dealing with this for years, not only do they have to dress their dog, but they have to rebuild how their dog sees them. Again, this can be done. You know, and I don't want to use these type when I talk about like the training ceiling and like expectations, I don't want to scare people. I don't want people to feel like, oh God, like this is, you know, if I have a dog who's nasty on the leash, it's going to take me a year before I can even walk him. Like, absolutely not. You can be walking your dog effectively in a matter of weeks, you know, two or three weeks. Um, you could have a better walk tomorrow. You could have the best walk of your life tomorrow. I do. I mean, we, I see that all the time in my training. I mean, I have dogs, like I said, who have been doing this for years. Um, and I mean, as you know, as soon as I take them on the walk, is it like where I want to be? Like, no, it's not like, you know, it's not how our walk is going to look in three weeks, but I mean, it's improved. It's improved, you know, because we're starting the training. We're starting the training process. So you should start training um, no matter where you are. But just be mindful of expectations. Check out the video on the training ceiling. That's going to be a factor too. That's a part of your expectations. Um, but just don't be too hard on yourself or be too hard on your dog evaluate where you are realize that you know not you don't compare yourself to other dog owners or other people's dogs or dogs that you see on you know youtube or facebook or something like that because that dog's different from your dog and that person is different from you and you're starting in different places most likely so get started but don't get frustrated just keep at it it is an absolute journey it is an absolute process it is not an event this doesn't just happen overnight or in two weeks. This is something that you work on consistently and you just keep making steps, making steps, making steps, making steps. Um, and that is how you'll get to where you want to be. Um, but just be mindful that everybody's different. And so everyone's expectations are different. I hope this has helped. Um, I've kind of, um, I've kind of, you know, uh, rambled a little bit here, I think, but uh, but hopefully this is something that hits home for some people who might be struggling. And that's that's really, you know, who I want to make sure this is aimed towards as well. You know, I know there are people because I've been there. I mean, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years. So there's been times where uh, particularly earlier on where it felt like, what am I doing wrong? You know, and, and it doesn't mean you can't take a different approach, but don't feel like you're doing something wrong just because you're still trying to get to where you want to go. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Um, hit me up in the comments. If you have any questions, I would love to talk to you. I'd love to hear from you. Have you had any um, issues with this yourself? Have you found a new approach? Um, you know, I'd love to hear anything you have to say. I know it would help other people as well. Um, and that's what this is all about is helping dog owners out there uh, resolve these issues and enjoy their, their pet dogs that much more. So thank you for watching. I uh, will see you in the next one and goodbye.